Hello everyone, as you have known, as I spoke in my last video, the rampant confusion that is targeted to children, I did use certain words, and I just want to make a disclaimer, I am making this video just as a follow-up, not because someone said something or this, that, etc. I've actually used to get that sometimes, where I would just make a correction or uh, not necessarily a correction but sometimes I would make a correction or I'd explain something further so people could understand just in case because my mind would go M now I can see why someone else might misunderstand this that etc so I want to make a video just to be like oh by the way this is what I was trying to show because sometimes people don't actually catch on some do some don't but then it's not until later on I'm like oh some people might not actually be able to comprehend that and I can understand that there's certain things where I'm like I wonder what they mean by that and it's like sometimes I go hmm someone could get actually confused about this etc let me reword it it's kind of like when people say certain things it's like I can see different ways that people may not actually understand what they're trying to say and it's like it would be better if you worded it like this or this that etc some people take that as hurtful criticism they get upset about it oh well I've dealt with that like in general in a general sense, I'm not talking about anyone specifically, just in general. And, um, because I, I've actually had before, in the past, where I'd make videos, and people would be like, you know, you sound very defensive in this. Um, I'm actually not. Sometimes my voice just fluctuates in a general stanza. If you see it as that, then so shall be. I don't care. Congratulations. You you want to hear us that you <laughs> like I don't care cuz like that's actually my emotion. It's like I don't care. Like if you want to take it a certain way, go ahead. There's going to be people who hate you anyways. There's going to be people who disagree with you. There's going to be people who disagree with God and then when they meet God and they get thrown to the pit of hell, well guess what? They're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I used to say gnashing and then my mom's like it's gnashing. The G is silent and I'm like Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like when I used to s say like, uh, like jalapeno, but it's like a jalo like jalapeno or something like that. Or, no, wait, I think I used to say jalapeno and it's like, it's jalapeno. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember the, uh, uh mm, whatever. I remember I would say certain words and it's like, no, 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 no it's this. That that letter's silent. Then why put the letter in there? <laughs> like, bruh. However, and by the way, I'm not getting, like, this, that, etc. I'm trying to make a joke, in a way. Sometimes I try to do certain things and people don't understand. Because they want to think in a... So there's some people who are always in a combative mind state. Um, There's a lot of people who will also say that, Oh, I have a pride problem. I have a pride problem. And they will always tell you that to not take accountability of things. Where behind closed doors, if you correct them, they will thank you, but then never change. Which kind of says a lot. Just saying. I'm not I'm not saying because I've corrected other people, but I've seen where other people have corrected someone, or people in general, and they don't take that correction. They take it behind closed doors, but then they do it over and over and over again, which says a lot about the people. Oh, but then they say, I have a pride problem. They will use that as an excuse, just so you know. Very common amongst narcissists too, and, the, and just toxic people in general. So they be narcissistic or not, it's very common among toxic people. And if they're claiming to be in Christ, you gotta check. Mm -mm, you sure? Are you sure you're not just blinded? And I'm talking about those who you assume someone's saved, but they're actually not. You should really check that. Just saying. Because sometimes you want to have the best thought that, like, in the hope that they are saved but in reality you start seeing things you start seeing things that they're saying you start seeing those hand signs bruh you sure you see the eye the, the look in the eyes that type of thing bruh <laughs> we however correlating back onto the video what i wanted to say is as i spoke yesterday of how everything in the world is getting worse which is a fact you must understand the way words are being used upon not only adults, but also to the young ones, children, should they be teenagers or even younger. And by the way, for the websites I was talking about, there's one called like 
QR or something. There's also Yahoo Answers and things of that sort. The, you can literally look up questions just in general. And you can see a whole bunch of children being confused about this, that, etc. And a lot of them actually admit that sometimes it's their friends that are saying, hey, this, that, etc. And then they get confused because they start questioning themselves because of other people's opinions or words and this, that, etc. It's a very, very rampant thing. And now you also have adults that are influencing children, not only through other means, but also that of, it's okay, you, you can be this. And parents not actually taking the proper parenting role and saying, you lead. Bruh, a four-year-old can't lead. One day they might want to be a dinosaur. They might want to be an attack helicopter. Are you going to help them with that? No. You're going to see, oh, <laughs> just a child. Or like the example of where people are transitioning their sodomite child. Not knowing that the child is actually a sodomite or not. They're assuming because they're not fit. A four-year-old male wants to play. With Bobbies and this, that, etc. Oh no, I, I feel my child's gay. Okay, sodomite. Oh no. I've literally read cases of that. Where a woman assumed her child was a sodomite because of this, that, etc. And guess what? The child is under 10 years old. And it's like, bro, what is wrong with you? I've seen even fathers. Yes, biological males. And now it's more common in mothers for some odd disgusting reason i don't know why probably you can correlate back onto maybe more deceptible more deceived because eve you know that type of thing temptation and that type of mindset um but dude bruh now granted there are some men that also think in that type of way there's a lot of men that don't mm, how do i word it properly they don't stick up for their family they allow their um their wives to control everything this etc literally it's kind of like the reason um as, as an example my first ever boyfriend the reason why i broke up with him is because he wanted a woman to lead i'm not that type of woman i never was i don't want to lead what do you mean it's like and i literally used to look at him and it's like as, as if i'm in a relationship with myself because I'm indecisive. What do you want to eat? I don't know. Now, if I feel like want, like if I feel like I want chicken, I'm going to know for a fact that I'm like, I want chicken, point blank. But if I don't want chicken, I don't know what I want. You pick. And then you pick and I go, I don't want that. <laughs> it's like one of those seven things. <laughs> Give me choices and I can select. It's like one of those type of things. I can't just say it off the top of my head. Like, what do you mean? Now, when it comes to drinks, usually I want tea. Or tea. And usually tea. Uh, I love tea. And water. Water's really good. People really need more water in their system. I need more water in my system. Everyone needs more water in their system. L literally, we need more water. Now, don't overdo it, because I remember I once saw this one kid in my class. This was back in high school. I mean, he was like a pothead. And he said that, I remember I was like, why are you drinking a full, like, he had a full gallon of water. And he was like chugging the living di daylights out of it. He's like, I already drank one. I just have to, this, that, etc. I guess he was trying to dilute everything out of his system, because he was like a, uh, what was it? I think he was a wrestler. I think that's what he did. He wrestled for uh, the school. And they would do regular drug drug tests and stuff. And he was like a major pothead. He's like, oh, I smoked the day beforehand. This, that, et cetera. And now I'm just trying to flush out my system. By the way, I never knew that people could do that. I didn't know that if they did that, that that's how they would just flush their system. They could literally just flush their system out with a whole bunch of water. I never knew that until that day. I was like, what? And then I asked my mom. And she's like, yeah, people do that. Oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> Why would they even smoke? Uh, did you know that smoking cannabis isn't actually that good for you? I've I've looked up the medical aspects of it, and it's the oil base that is actually the best. Just saying. So, the medical aspect correlating onto the oil-based things uh, is a lot better for you than that of smoking. Just saying. That is a general stanza. It's kind of like... 
I'm not much for Brad. I'm not. He is very toxic. But he has been very vocal about the liquid form of cannabis and how healthy it is. And I remember giving him information about the how the Chinese used it. And yes, it's actually very good to use the oil-based substance of it. And sometimes even just eating it and the pure strong type. And because smoking it really doesn't do anything other than gets you high. It really does not have the same effect as if you had it in a liquid form or if you just ate it. There is a difference and there is a type of way that you can do so. And I remember posting something about it um, a while ago. I remember emailing him about it as well. It's like this, this, uh, this, that, etc. And it's like, you know, because he would just talk about it. But then I did the research and then I sent it to him. And he's like, yes, exactly. See? (laughs) <laughs> it's like one of those type of things. Um, like, he didn't have much information. He had some information on it, and I gave him a whole bunch more information. But, yeah. It's, uh, like, one of those type of things. Um, I did actually realize that what people were accusing him of, um, yeah. It, it, it was actually true. Yikes! Uh, but it's like, not only did I see how other people were treated by him... I saw it for my own self too. However, other than that, back to the main topic. Now with words, how do people use words? As an example, I made statements about how there were these two women that I knew, very feminine, in the way they dressed and actions and this, that, etc. But supposedly they had masculine energy. The reason, and I use, I'm saying energy with hand quotations, because later in the video, I mentioned how peers and folks and things of that sort they use words to try to confuse the living daylights out of you now all those women actually masculine no want to know why because they're females now one of them is definitely a witch and made the lord jesus christ rebuke her like ew no thank you the lord rebuke you i remember before i got saved she used to do witchcraft toward me and bruh and yes uh witches can actually manipulate your dreams and things of that sort and that's why it's best if you come to the Lord truly broken and contrite. Because after I came to the Lord truly broken and contrite, and the Lord healed me and this, that, etc., I must say, I have never had any form of dream where something was trying to harm me or attack me or this, that, etc. Because want to know what happens now? If something is trying to attack me or harm me, I literally say, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And guess what? It dies or runs away or goes poof. Literally. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Now, I have power over you. Why? Only through the Lord. Now, you can't do anything to me. I can just demolish you. It's kind of like with this one witch. She was trying to attack me. I went, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And I ran toward her. And I smashed her into the ground. And she shattered. And she was trying to do a spell thing. I've had animals try and attack me. And I'm like, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And I, all of a sudden, I have a sword in my hand. And I'm stabbing the gators. Or the creatures. And this, that, etc. Same with uh, some people I know. I knew. Uh, and whom I knew. And I could sometimes tell with the, the way they would do their eyes toward me. It was like, I could tell they didn't like me in some way. But I was just... Like, I, I wouldn't always be confrontational about things it was just like meh type thing and there was this one person she was trying to scare me with this that etc and she was trying to use a weapon toward me and instead i was like the lord rebuke you and that one i said that and then and then i went the lord jesus christ rebuke you and all of a sudden i pulled out all of a sudden i had a gun i went i have a gun and she started running. And I was like hopping over like buildings and stuff. And then I caught up and went. And I forgot what what was stated. But it was like back off. Something like that. And she was like scared. Like huh. There's so many dreams now where I have where something is trying to attack me. Someone. Usually animals though. But sometimes it's a person. They're trying to attack me or do evil or this that etc. Even those in whom I assumed were saved because I could sense some type of hostility about them toward me 
because I could sense their toxicness. They were trying to come at me in a certain way. I, I could sense it, but then again, I also saw it eventually, their true toxicness, and it's like, ah, that makes sense. And in the dream, it's like, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And guess what? They can't do anything. I've had dreams where sometimes it's like I I would forget that I could just say the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, but I cry out for help, and guess what? That person is taken out. I mean, like, from somewhere, that person is just, boom, taken out. Or they're dragged off by people. Things like that. Uh, I used to get um, horrific dreams about Ori raping me, and things of that sort. Horrific. And it really messed with my sleep and things of that sort. And want to know what happened after I got saved? Whenever I had dreams like that, that would occur. I would literally cry out, help me. And all of a sudden, it would be like this bright light. And I, I don't mean it in like a toxic way or symbol, symbolic or whatever. I don't mean it in that type of way. But usually when I would look in the direction, it's just very bright light. And it would be bright light and he would be taken out. Or he would get just shot, or he would... Uh, actually, there were a lot of times where he ended up getting killed in my dream. There were f there were a few times where two people were saying... Uh, one person specifically says, I'm keeping my eye on you. And they'd state it straight toward Roy. And Roy would then try to harm me. And beforehand, I couldn't speak. After I started speaking up, I started, like... I was able to yip or something like that, like, to open up my throat to actually speak to uh because especially after i started speaking up a lot of the horrific dreams i used to have when i was a child to teenager to even during college i would get those dreams but now and it was only once i would get the dream and it would be like overcome in a way because all of a sudden it's like i'd get the dream and i'd I'd yell for help or help me or something of that sort and he would be taken out and then uh, another dream and then a dream and it's like I remember having those dreams I could never escape or I would it, it would be like right before getting abused and I'd wake up in like a cold sweat and just crying and just oof. but now it's like it's just overcoming those dreams dreams that I used to have where I couldn't escape or this that etc where I was get where someone was physically trying to harm me or this that etc I would get those dreams and I'd either say the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you and I'd chase after them and I'd never have that dream ever again or even for new dreams where something's trying to attack me or this etc sometimes I actually have dreams where I literally it's like I don't dream all I see is like when I wake up it's just light that's all it is there's only light as if I didn't dream anything <laughs> that type of thing and it's just whoo well I do have a dream and it's a certain type of dream um, I've had dreams where people are just driving by in the sense of I know they're watching me and how do I know they're watching me is because I I know this one person she actually was a stalker she probably still is I don't know but the thing is is that I also know she is a witch and things of that sort now granted she's not doing anything in my dreams only watching me and due to the fact that in the past she would know information without me saying anything, that means that she is watching me. I remember, e even before I even came to the Lord, I remember when it came to the Ruby Tuesday situation. This was after the Ruby Tuesday situation. I remember just saying, I don't ever want to deal with anyone that's toxic, this, that, etc. Like, I remember just saying that in general, and I had a dream. And I actually had uh, another dream that correlates kind of onto that <clears throat> after getting saved. And, um, but the other dream was where Dana was trying to, like, come at me, but there was, like, a whole bunch of darkness around her. And she got blocked out. Like, it, it was like a force barrier. She couldn't get to me. Which I'm grateful for, because I truly never want her in my life ever again. She was very toxic. She was a bully. I do know that she stalked me. She actually, like, she's on camera going to the campus that I... The, the college I was going to, she's on camera going to the college. I remember there were t times where she would call my phone. Hey, are you coming to work tomorrow? And this this was actually before, like, uh, before Hurricane was going to hit back in, like, what, 2018? Something like that. Uh, no, wait, not 2018. I think 2017. And uh, it was before Hurricane 
was about to hit like on Saturday or Sunday or something like that. And I remember I was going to the college and I said, no, I'm going to the college, something like that. I probably should have not told her. Uh, she probably would have showed up anyways because she was able to track me because there were some times where she would look at her phone and then she'd look at me, uh, up at me and then she looked at her phone and it was like, she knew. <laughs> it's like, bruh. And like, there was a woman that uh, lives down my street, a brunette woman. Uh, they looked very similar to Dana. That's why I just assumed maybe that's Dana. Now it could just be a different person. I don't know. But all I know is they lived down the street with the three boys and the black man down there. And she would drive one of the cars down there. And she would literally do... And she kind of looked like Dana because, like, the side facer features and things of that sort. She would look at the phone and then look at me. It's the exact same action that Dana would do. So, however, I must say, though, Dana always looked so young, though. However, <laughs> other than that, though, um... Dana would, this was during when I was still working at Ruby Tuesday. I went, I was talking to Miss Joyce and Miss Kathy during the time. And Dana came through the doors. She walked in. I looked at her. And, I, and during that time, I was like, that person kind of looks like Dana, but I don't know if it is. I just felt drawn to look at them. And I saw them. And then I looked away. And then the next day when I was at work. She got upset and said she didn't even recognize me with my hair down. And then that's when it clicked. Oh, that was Dana. That's that's weird. Why <laughs> why would you do this? It's kind of like I remember a few times when I was with my tutor uh, at the because I was trying to learn Spanish and I'm very bad with learning languages. I mean, literally. Uh, and boom, there she is. And it's like, huh. It's like li mm, the college got you on camera, bro. However. And it's like, not only does, do I have, uh, cameras and things of that sort, of where she would literally be where I'm at and things of that sort. I remember once she was actually parked right in front of my car when I took my grandparents to Walmart. And I, I was like, I, I got the seatbelt for my grandpa and he, like, he could still do his seatbelt. My grandma couldn't really do her seatbelt properly. And I noticed, I felt like looking over. And there, there was Dana sitting in the car watching me. And I'm just like, what is this? It made no sense. And it's like, literally though. like the, And I remember once when I went to the college and she was, Dana was actually sitting. Uh, it was after I was talking to Miss A. I'm going to call her Miss A. I spoke to Miss A. I walked out of her office and there was Dana sitting right there. And when I looked at Dana, she had this black speckles, like from one shoulder to the other on top, uh, like, like she wasn't wearing anything. It's like she actually, it, it looked like bugs or something just flying around, but there weren't any bugs. It was like no one, it, it, because how other people were sitting and stuff, it was like, like, I don't want to say it was spiritual or anything, but like, I could just see something there and it was like. And, and there, it just, it was like true darkness around here type thing. It was like one of those type of things. And I was like, <laughs> and then it, it just reminded me of the dreams where she would be in the facility, but she can't speak to me, which is good because she would probably try to still harm me in some way. Um, Dana would slander my name with a whole bunch of other people. Like, bro, like, thank the Lord. That God blocked you out because you're toxic. Thank the Lord that I have had dreams where I used to be terrified and wake up in cold sweats. And all of a sudden, I would get that dream again. And then, but this time, I was able to overcome. I was able to escape. I was able to call out and speak up. And I would not ever have that dream ever again. And a lot of the dreams that I had correlated onto something, someone trying to attack me, specifically Rory. And now I'm able to speak up. And since I've been speaking up about it and things of that sort, I'm overcoming those dreams. And I'm grateful because I do feel like a lot of the time those dreams would hold me back and things of that sort. There's other dreams where I'd have, like in general, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. And I'd overcome. And it, it was just like, it, it's so beautiful. It really is. Um, the ones I love the most is like where it seems like I didn't really dream at all. 
and all it is is just a bright light before I wake up. Like, it, it's like pure white light. Like, there's no, like, actual wording for it. It's just, it's as if I didn't dream that, that night at all. And it's just so beautiful. And it's like, oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> like, whoo. But literally, like, if, if you belong unto the Lord, nothing can harm you. In, in truth, nothing can actually harm you. Unless it's the Lord's judgment that is falling upon you. And God chastens you in various ways. Thank the Lord for it. Because it's there to correct you. Are you going to take that correction? Or are you going to stay in the toxicness? And just say, oh, it's my pride. I have pride issues, you know that. If you're not changing. And you're being called out on the same thing over and over and over again. I think that says a lot about you. I'm not kidding. Are you say are you sure you are saved? Because sometimes I hear testimonies of how someone got saved and then after a while a lot of things don't add up. Or where I've never even heard someone's testimony and sometimes I hear someone's testimony, but it's bits and pieces. It's not a full aspect. And sometimes those bits and pieces actually sound like they're taking stories from other people and putting it as their own. I'm not kidding on that either. However, in the video itself, later in the video, I mentioned how peers and folks would use words to confuse the living daylights. They use those labels, they use those titles, categories to confuse people. It's kind of like I actually once got told, wow, you're very masculine. Want to know why she said I was masculine? Because she said the way I opened the door was very masculine. I must say though, I had to use two hands. I had to place one hand on one door to hold it down and use my other hand to open up the door. Because by the way, I tried opening up that door a few times and it feels like it's locked. It just won't. The other door kind of goes within. So I had to open it like that. But I guess for some somehow, that was very masculine. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> mm, mm, not really. Or that of, wow, you're such a gentleman. And, and they would just say it in that type of way. And they know I'm female. And the thing, the thing is, I've actually had where I'm pretty sure it was that one woman from the college. And she was walking with some brunette woman who was shorter. And they were walking down my street. And they said quite loudly. And I, I was in my skirt. My nice, comfortable, soft skirt. Oh, so, so beautiful. And um, they're walking down and they went, I think that's a guy. This, that, etc. Because they knew me during the time I was confused and this, that, etc. Uh, but they went, I think that's a guy. Pretty sure that's a guy, man. Because they're trying to see if... I, I think they were trying to see if they could still influence me or something of that sort. There were a lot of people who were influencing one's mindset and things of that sort. It was very toxic, very toxic. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke them. And may the Lord rebuke those who are afraid to speak up. Because there are a lot of people who are afraid to speak up upon those matters. Because they don't want to lose their job. They want they don't want this. They don't want that. They could care less about protecting children and the more uh the more for protecting their pockets and things of that sort. It's disgusting. It's disgusting point blank. Um I've learned that I have to be careful with certain words in a general aspect. Like how I stated in the other video, I have to be careful with the word attractive because a lot of people tend to use that word in a way of sexualization. Um same with sometimes I have to be careful with certain phrases. I remember in th this was years back. I asked this one girl if she wanted to go for coffee so we could just chat and get to know each other because I'm trying to make a friend. <laughs> and she automatically assumed I was flirting with her and that I was hitting on her. Which I didn't know that asking someone out for coffee to go chat, just chat. I also want to talk about classes and about science and this, that, etc. And I made my intentions clear. It's just for psychology and this, that, etc. Because you want to learn more. I have books. I can give you the tips about the courses. This, that, etc. That's all it is. Maybe make a friend along the way. I didn't mention the friend part. But like. Yeah. Somehow that is. Because I. 
I knew someone else who was just s- similar to me. I think she she could have actually also been autistic as well, to be honest, now thinking about it. And I remember, like, I know for a fact, she, she had, like, ADHD, though. Maybe that's why there's actually a statement where a- people who are ADHD or ADD get along well with folks who are autistic, things like that. Um, but the thing is, is that I don't think she... I can't remember if she had autism or not, or if she said anything of that sort. She would have had a high-functioning autistic, though. She she would have been that. But, um... She was very sweet. Like, truly, very sweet. And, um... But she, uh... But I remember asking her out for coffee. I was like, hey, you want to go get coffee? And we can talk about our classes and this, that, etc. And guess what? We, we were friends. We became friends because of that. There was nothing romantic about it. And she didn't see it in a romantic way. So that means that maybe because of, like, how people use, like, I actually never knew. Is that actually, like, a dating thing? Because, like, I don't understand. I thought, like, I don't know. I thought you could just ask, like, ask people to, like, go get coffee and you can chat with them. This, that, et cetera. Like, I thought, like, that's how you make friends. But I guess not. I guess that's a way of flirting with people. I never knew that until, like, afterwards. And I got made fun of. And they're like, Piper asked this person out for coffee. This, that, et cetera. I'm like, I wasn't flirting with them. I wasn't. But then it's like, no, nah, you were flirting with them. And it's like, why can't you just take my word as it, as I stated? Like, what's your pro? Like, there's literally times where I would just state something. And someone's like, no, nah, this is what you mean by it. And it's like, bro, what? <laughs> I'm telling you what I mean and this, that, etc. But you just deny it because you'd rather go upon what you want to assume. What you want to feel and this, that, etc. So indirectly, they are manipulating the narrative because they feel that they might be able to get away with it and or make the other person say things or think things and this, that, etc., which also correlates back onto peer pressure and things of that sort. Now, when it came to my own truth, now a lot of people are like, there's no such thing as your own truth. Well, when it correlates onto your own truth, correlating onto this is what I mean and this is what I feel, correlating onto the fact of this isn't what I'm saying here. This isn't what I'm feeling here. I'm saying it just because I want to state this. When I say this, it doesn't mean that. Because it's different for everyone. It's kind of like when people say, oh, body language is a thing. Well, my truth is that you can't really go on body language. And that actually is a true statement in many regards. And a lot of people will admit to that. You can't go upon, even experts, they're like, you really can't go on body language. Because if someone's autistic, or if someone has this, or, or this, that, etc., you can just take the whole body language thing and throw it out the window and into the ocean and it would be dragged into the depths of the sea because it doesn't matter. It, you really can't go upon body language to understand someone with this, etc. You can't. Kind of like how people say, if she's touching her hair, it means she likes you. Um, not always. I've actually met a lot of females and males who get very anxious when they talk to people and they start messing with their hair or something and it doesn't mean they like the person it's because they have anxiety and things of that sort an example people used to assume because i would get very red in the face and someone would say something very in- inappropriate that there was a time where as an example this person i care oh katie her name's katie she said like someone was talking about how how their tongue is very long and they showed like how far their tongue went i'm like huh that's very interesting and katie made a perverted joke and i got very very red because not only did i feel extremely uncomfortable i'm not kidding like it uh, i felt very uncomfortable i was like oh this makes me so uncomfortable i don't feel like this that etc but some people after they realized what katie said they could assume me getting red meant that i may have liked uh I may have liked James. But in reality, no, I don't. I saw him as a friend. For a short time. <laughs> short time. Um, I did like the fact that he was protective of me. But then it was like... Was he only protective of me because he liked me in some way? Because that's kind of weird. However, because I've had people who were protective of me. And it was because they became motherly or fatherly toward me. So. But, um... Yeah, Katie made me feel very uncomfortable, and I got very, very red. 
I used to get even redder. Like, I, I remember when I was reading a text from Shauna. And <laughs> Shauna was telling... Like, Shauna is so funny. I was reading a text from Shauna. And she was telling me about how... um What she was uh, doing and when she was backing out. And what happened and things of that sort. <laughs> and it made... It literally made me, like, jaw drop what I was reading. Because it's funny, but it was also, like, wow type thing. And someone... And someone that works, Miss A, she walked by and she was like, Piper. And But she she looked down to see what I was, like, doing. But, like, as soon as I jaw dropped, she walked past very quickly, saw what I was doing, said Piper. And it's just like, and I got very, very red. Want to know why I got very, very red? I actually also stormed out because I was like, huh, heartbeat, boom, boom, boom. Because uh, that would actually always happen in general. Want to know why? I would be in class in middle school and high school. And a teacher would call my name. I'd sometimes uh, jump because startled. Or I knew it was coming. And they'd call my name. And then my face would get very, very red. And I would be like, oh. <laughs> Even if I knew the answer, I'm just like, oh. Type thing. And, uh, but yeah. It's like, a, a lot of things can make me. Like, I've actually heard, overheard conversations that people were saying because like let's say i'm at the store and i overhear a certain conversation i can go very red just by overhearing something that's either embarrassing or disgusting or this that etc and i go very red because i actually feel very uncomfortable there are a lot of times where i became very red in the face and things of that sort and i'm sure there's people who assumed i like them or something of that sort but in reality no not really i didn't no thank you However, all in all, the main statement <laughs> of what I meant beforehand is if you're born female, you are female. There's no such thing as masculine or feminine energies. Want to know why? Because you're female. Don't get involved with the whole, oh, but your energy is more masculine. Because that actually also correlates into like a form of witchcraft as well. And by the way, that is another topic that I will be getting into eventually. Now, not in the same uh way that a lot of people like to think of this that etc but a lot of terms uh that are actually seen in witchcraft are also used in ways to just to confuse the living daylights out of people especially children who are very deceptible in those terminologies and things of that sort and it is just it's just interesting man so interesting. And on to the next video that I will be uh, doing. I will be uploading two more videos on here. And then I will start recording the narcissist aspects. And I'm pretty sure I will post it to Rumble first. And then do a live stream on Twitch. But yeah. Because I want to make it like just right. And get it all like boom 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 type thing. <laughs> I think I will actually only stream like a few videos, a uh, few very, because like the thing is, is that if I streamed, actually I, I might stream every single video, to be honest, that I have, because like, even if that might be like three to five hours long, three to four hours, maybe, but like three to five hours long, oh well, um, and, uh, but I, I have it on my Rumble and then I live stream it on Twitch and then I save it on, onto my, uh, I make highlights, which then the videos are kept and yes i do have to go on my twist um, twitch but on my twitch and maybe on my rumble i have to look through my rumble i think i already deleted the videos needed but i will be going through those things and deleting certain uh videos that i've had and that i've done where it's someone else using the word of the lord but because uh uh certain things bro however the next video that I will be speaking about very shortly correlates onto enemy of my enemy, my friend.